Johnny Depp and Amber Heard defamation trial has come to an end with the jury reaching a final verdict. After many weeks of the trial, all the testimonies, evidence, and final arguments are officially concluded and out in the open. Johnny clearly won the court of public opinion and now the entire case, and Amber Heard, aka Amber Turd, now becoming one of the most hated women on the internet, with the jury finding that Amber Heard had defamed Johnny on all three counts. Throughout the trial, her stories did not always seem to add up. She was exposed on multiple occasions to have actually verbally and mentally abusing Johnny, and she'd have what I'd like to call crocodile tears. Johnny Depp's career clearly took a big hit from her 2018 op-ed she had released on her alleged abuse, but what will hers be like in the years to come after losing this court case? In a previous video, I talked about Johnny Depp's past that might have contributed to this toxic relationship. However, in this one, I'll be digging into Amber Heard's past, present, and give a prediction on what her future will look like now that this has all ended. Honestly, I had no idea who Amber Heard was before the defamation trial, but it seems like she's had a pretty decent career nonetheless. You could say that she got into acting in what you would call the traditional way, in which she dropped out of school to pursue a modeling career in New York, soon after pursuing acting in Los Angeles at only 17 years old. She appeared in two music videos in 2004 and landed some small supporting cast roles in TV shows. Her first film debut would be a minor role in the 2004 sports drama, Friday Night Lights, and from there she'd work her way up from just making general cameos to eventually become a leading star in the DC universe. This would be her most notable role that first kicked off in 2017 with Justice League, continuing in Aquaman 2018 featuring Jason Momoa, and the sequel that's set to premiere in 2023. It was hard to pinpoint an exact number for her overall net worth, so let's just say that it's in the range of 2.5 to 8 million dollars. Editing me here, that net worth might be in the negatives now because she has to pay Johnny Depp a ton of money. Outside of acting, she also seems to be passionate about activism and advocates for women's and children's rights. She's devoted her time to humanitarian organizations and was named Human Rights Champion of the United Nations Human Rights Council in 2018. Before Johnny Depp from 2008 to 2012, Amber Heard dated photographer Tessa Van Rie. Though in her 2016 divorce proceeding with Johnny Depp, it was revealed that Amber Heard had been arrested on misdemeanor domestic violence charges in 2009. She had allegedly grabbed Van Rie by the arm and hit her, but was never charged. After this, Van Rie would actually come out saying that the incident had been misinterpreted and over-sensationalized, with Amber Heard being wrongfully accused. 2012, Johnny and Amber apparently met on the set of The Rum Diary, soon getting engaged in 2014, married in 2015, and Amber filing for divorce only five months later in 2016. Throughout their time together, it seems as though Amber had quite a few affairs, including Cara Delevingne, Elon Musk, and now recently come to light, James Franco? She really had him over the night before filing for divorce from Johnny Depp. This was also around the time when Johnny Depp's mother's funeral was supposed to happen. I find it crazy that you're the one cheating and being a total scumbag, but you're the one that specifically filed for divorce? Two settled their divorce in August 2016, filing a joint statement that partially read, Our relationship was intensely passionate and at times volatile, but always bound by love. Neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. There was never any intent of physical or emotional harm. Amber Heard reportedly received a 7 million payment and both signed a non-disclosure agreement. And that temporarily concluded the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard relationship saga. In 2018, she started dating art dealer Vito Schnabel, which would last less than a year. Then from 2020 to 2021, she'd date cinematographer Bianca Butti, Butti? breaking up rather quickly as well. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard have anything in common, it's literally the fact that neither of them can maintain long, sustainable, healthy relationships. It seemed as though Amber Heard and Johnny Depp had mutually ended things and moved on with their lives, at least until Amber posted her op-ed in the Washington Post in 2018. The piece details abuse Amber had suffered since she was young and outlines that she wants to be an advocate for women that suffer from domestic violence, wanting them to speak out about their experiences as she has even describing herself as a public figure representing domestic abuse. Kind of ironic, right? It happens to so many women. When it happens in your home, behind closed doors with someone you love, it's not as straightforward. If a stranger did this, it would be a no-brainer. I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. Imagine a powerful man as a ship like the Titanic. That ship is a huge enterprise. 
When it strikes an iceberg, there are a lot of people on board desperate to patch up holes. Not because they believe in or even care about the ship, but because their own fates depend on the Enterprise. People automatically assume it was solely the 2018 op-ed that tanked Johnny Depp's career and led to the defamation suit, but actually it isn't. It was just the stick that broke the camel's back. I couldn't come up with a better phrase to match this situation, so I'm sorry. In 2016, Amber Heard accused Johnny Depp of physically abusing her on many accounts, and Johnny said that these allegations had cost him everything. And when they signed that divorce settlement, Johnny actually gave up any right to sue Amber over the 2016 claims. So he was basically forced to sue her over the 2018 op-ed. His team would then attempt to prove that it was the op-ed that had done substantial damage to Johnny's popularity and career, leading us to the current defamation trial. I'm not going to recap the entire trial given that's just hours upon hours of content. So in this video, I'm specifically focusing on key moments that key in on Amber's dishonesty and abuse. This case was meant to strictly focus on defamation, not the things said and done in this obviously toxic relationship. So Amber Heard probably won't be going to jail, but I don't think that the things she said and done should be easily forgotten. When Amber testified, she stated that Johnny had essayed her and engaged in a pattern of violence during the relationship going on to say that he had lashed out at her in jealousy-fueled rages paired with drug and alcohol use, resulting in her often fearing for her life. She described Johnny Depp's relationship with her as constantly switching between intense moments of love and violence. I knew it was wrong and I knew that it had to leave him, and that's what broke my heart because I didn't want to leave him. Throughout the entire trial, her testimonies consisted of stories revolving around Johnny Depp's alleged abuse, standing by what she had said in her op-ed. Though something stands out to me and many others. How could someone that's clearly so afraid of their abuser talk like this? It's not brave. It's not strong. I don't want to, because I don't want to fucking fight. You run away every single fight. want to make it easy on you so you split. You don't fight for me. You don't fight when there's a problem. You don't- True. I'm not the one who fucking throws fucking pots and Those are diff whatever that's the different. fucking else at me. That's different. Just because I've thrown pots and pans does not mean that you vases come and knock on the door. Just because there are vases does not mean that you come and knock on the door. Relationship. Across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you, even a lot of fights have been around a long time. I know. My point isn't to downplay victims of abuse because at some point you would assume that the victim would either fight back or leave, understandably so. However, with Amber Heard, I think it's a different case. With more evidence brought to light, it's obvious that Amber played a key part in a good amount of the abuse that took place in this relationship. There are multiple recordings of her admitting to hitting Johnny Depp and verbally abusing and mocking him. She threw two bottles of vodka that led to Johnny having a severed finger, which caused him to have such an intense nervous breakdown that he'd actually write on the walls with his own blood. Johnny saying, she threw the large bottle and it made contact and shattered everywhere. I honestly didn't feel the pain at first at all. I felt heat as if something were dripping down my hand. I looked down and realized that the tip of my finger had been severed. Continuing, that while he's never experienced a mental breakdown, that's probably the closest he's ever been to having one. And the most infamous act, she pooped in his bed. It was a photograph of the bed, our bed. Um, and on my side of the bed, um, was human fecal matter fecal matter. She claims that her dogs did it, but I mean, look at the size of these dogs. If you look it up, that is definitely human sh Now I really understand why people have been calling her Amber Turd. All of that being said, it's hard to believe that Amber Heard was the sole victim. Not to mention, in her testimonies, she's blandly playing it up for the jury and the camera, often crying with no tears and even wiped her eyebrows in an attempt to wipe her eyes. Come on, there's literally a clip showing her posing for the camera as if she's wiping her face from crying, but she actually isn't. The final verdict was made June 1st. The jury found that Amber Heard defamed Johnny Depp in three separate statements in the Washington Post piece, and that Johnny defamed Amber with one statement his attorney made. Johnny won $10 million in damages, and Amber $2 million. Amber Heard obviously didn't take the loss well, posting a statement outlining her disappointment with how everything went. 
The disappointment I feel today is beyond words. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence still was not enough to stand up to the disproportionate power, influence, and sway of my ex-husband. I'm even more disappointed with what this verdict means for other women. It is a setback. It sets back the clock to a time when a woman who spoke up and spoke out could be publicly shamed and humiliated. It sets back the idea that violence against women is to be taken seriously. She's also planning to appeal the verdict, so we'll just have to see what happens with that. However, my opinion on the matter still stands. This is just a toxic relationship where nobody really is a winner or a sole victim. Even in the audio clip, Johnny Depp admitted to headbutting Amber Heard, but yet nobody's talking about it for some reason. You can throw a punch, yeah, screaming is okay. You can headbutt somebody screaming, but don't scream. Huh. I headbutted you on the f***ing Couldn't believe you did that. His level of physical abuse might have been self-defense, but again, as I said in my previous video, I don't believe that he's 100% innocent given his past and will never truly know what happened, even with this trial taking place. With everything that's been brought to light about Amber Heard, I assume that her career might take a big hit just as Johnny Depp's did when she accused him of abuse. Time will tell, especially as the new Aquaman comes out and the public response will be interesting to see. If you want to check out the Johnny Depp video I made last week, that'll be linked right here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.